Hello again. Vince here with something else nerdy in Terminal that I've been learning about. If you're brand new to the Linux Terminal command line, take a look at the fantastic introduction to Terminal commands from Ubuntu that I've linked in the description below. I hope to help others feel less fearful of the Terminal and more empowered to use it when needed. Today, let's have a look at something very handy in Bash, creating and using functions. Bash functions are similar to aliases, which themselves are sort of like command shortcuts that you can define and call upon repeatedly and quickly. For more information about aliases, I'll link a previous video that I made in the cards up above. Functions are, however, different to aliases, in that you can define more complex commands, as well as allow for input of one or more bash arguments when executing the function, that may in turn contain multiple commands that are strung together. I discovered the need for this when I was making my earlier video about a terminal-based dictionary. I wanted to allow input of an argument in an alias. In my particular case, it would be the word I was after the definition for. But following that command, I wanted to pipe the output into another command, which was less, just in case the output was over one page long, so I wouldn't need to scroll back to the start in order to read it. I discovered that a simple bash alias does not allow for that. Well, at least in my own limited search for a solution. This led me down the path of learning about functions. You can read more about them in this handy little article that I'll link below as well, and which is the guide that I will go with in my tutorial today. So if you look over here, these are some of the functions that I came up with in my .bashrc file. There are several ways that you can write functions, as shown in this article here. There are subtle differences between the two in terms of syntax, as well as whether you write it as multiple lines or a single line. And eventually I went with the single line format just to keep my .bashrc file looking relatively neat. So if we go back and examine one of the example functions that I made by, let's exit nano first, and this is one of the examples of the functions that I made. You'll find that what I first did was tell bash that we're making a function. And next I gave the function a unique name. In my case, DICTL. After that, you have a space and an open curly bracket, followed by the body of the function, which are the commands that you would like to run. Now take note back here in the article, it is important that the body of the function be separated from the open and closing curly brackets by either a space or a new line on either side of the body section. So back in my function, the body of this example contains the command DICT, which is the dictionary program I was using, followed by a dollar sign one, which is the argument I wanted to pass through to this function when I try to call it up in bash. In this case, it would be the word that I would like to define. And I would simply type it in as part of the command that calls up this function. After that, I wanted to pipe it into less. To close out the function in this single line format, you need a semicolon, followed by a space, and then the closing curly bracket. In the multi-line format, as this article suggests, you don't need the semicolon, you simply follow the command by a new line and the closing curly bracket. To demonstrate what this function does, let's just clear my screen. Before I call up the function to see what it does, let's have a look at what the DICT command does on its own. For example, if I wanted to look up the word keyboard, I would type DICT keyboard. Now, because I have both the dictionary and thesaurus applied, it will look up both of these databases and give me a really long answer, which I would need to scroll back through to read. I could, of course, run the same command, DICT keyboard, and with the pipe symbol, manually pipe it into less, like so. See, now I can scroll down and up and of course, Q to quit. However, if I call up the function that I made and presuming that I set it up correctly by typing DICTL, 
remembering that was the name that I gave the function, followed by the word keyboard. Now look what happens. It has run those exact commands, and at the same time, inserting the argument, which is the word keyboard, that I wanted inserted at that spot in the function. If we take a look down here in this article, if you want more complex functions, you can define multiple variables by naming them $1, $2, $3, and so forth, and adding what you want these arguments to be when you call up the function in your bash prompt. See how once you spend a bit of time setting up the functions you might need, you can save yourself a ton of time later for those strings of commands that you may need to run over and over again. Let's create ourselves another function as another example. So as well as putting the function in your .bashrc file, you can also input them directly into your terminal. With the downside that once you close your terminal, these functions will be lost unless you define them permanently in your .bashrc file. So if I just clear my screen again, and in our example, let's just make it a simple one, um, and let's use the alternative syntax. So we will scroll back up here to know what we're doing. Right here. And if we use this first syntax, Let's call our function test, followed by two brackets, open and close, followed by an open curly bracket, and enter. And we can continue entering our function commands as bash has recognized this is what we're trying to do. So next I want to create a function that will do an ls la of a particular directory, and we'll name that as our argument one. And again, simply, I wanna pipe this into less. Once we've done that, press enter, and finish the function by using a close curly bracket. And there we are, press enter, and we're back to the bash prompt. Now to test this out, let's call up the function by invoking test and let's pick a rather big directory so for example etsy this is the argument that i want to pass onto this function and bash will recognize it as the first argument and if i press enter you'll see that we are actually in less and scroll up and down and page up and page down and Q to quit. Now the other way of writing this would have been something like function test and open curly bracket. If I wanted to do it as a single line, space ls la first first argument and to pipe into less, followed by a semicolon and close curly bracket. Now, I've only just scratched the surface of using functions and arguments, as you can see in the rest of this article here. You can put functions in a script where you define global variables, as well as variables just within the function, which are referred to as local variables, and many other things which, frankly, I don't understand yet, but I will continue to investigate. It's your turn to have a play around now, create your own functions, and maybe let me know in the comments down below what you come up with. Thank you so very much for watching. If you want to be informed of future content, consider subscribing to this channel. As always, if you have any other comments, questions or suggestions, leave them down below for me and I will have a look at them when time permits. Bye bye for now.